Hello, and welcome to your introduction to glycolysis and cellular respiration. Chapter eight. Uh, let's get started. <clears throat> so during this screencast, we're going to go through kind of mostly just this part here. Um, how do cells obtain energy? Um, the answer, as we know, uh, is from originally the sun. It's kind of a really bad, it's like I'm a kindergartner picture of the sun. Um, and then we'll touch on the other three parts, glycolysis, cellular respiration, and fermentation um, in class. <clears throat> but just as a quick preview, because I know you're dying to know, um, this first process here, glycolysis, um, helps us to liberate some of the energy stored in glucose. If you look at this word, glycolysis, ooh, I've seen that word lysis before. It means to break down. And glyco looks like glycogen, which is made of glucose. So this is glucose. So glycolysis or glycolysis um, is the breakdown of glucose. Um, <clears throat> so this is kind of the first step of the process. And then um, you can go to the second step or the third step, which is really more like a third way rather than a third sequential step. Um, but cellular respiration, as we know, occurs in the mitochondria. And um, <clears throat> gives us a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, And then fermentation um, is actually an anaerobic process, uh, which means it does not require oxygen, but it just gives us a little bit of ATP. A little ATP. Um, <clears throat> so uh, glycolysis is actually also anaerobic. So it does not require oxygen, but cellular respiration does, and it is called an aerobic process. So it requires oxygen. Um, all right. So uh, let's get started. I think I already said that. Let's continue to be started. So how do cells obtain energy? Okay, most cellular energy, and here we mean most usable cellular energy, is stored in the chemical bonds of our good friend ATP. Um, so ATP is really good short-term energy storage molecule. But for our long-term energy storage, we're going to have glucose. So glucose is long-term energy storage. But glucose can't be, the energy in glucose can't be used to do cellular work. Um, <clears throat> we need a more volatile, a more unstable molecule like ATP to do our work. So we need to release the energy in glucose by breaking it down. And it gets broken down into two in two stages. Glycolysis, which, as we said on the previous slide, is the breakdown of glucose. And that just gives us a little bit of ATP. And if it's followed by step two, cellular respiration, that produces a lot of ATP. <clears throat> so then we have a lot of ATP available to do our cellular work. All right, so how do cells obtain energy? As I said previously, let's see if I can draw another equally pathetic sun or if I can get a little bit better. Our energy here on Earth originally comes from, the, this is a disaster, it's supposed to be a sun with sunglasses on, not even close, F for drawing. Um, so the ultimate source of energy is from the sun and so we need plants to take the light photo um, energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy for us. So that's what our plants do, photosynthetic organisms like plants, okay, capture the energy from sad Mr. Sun um, and store it in the bonds of glucose. <clears throat> then um, all organisms use glycolysis to liberate the energy stored in glucose, breaking up glucose. Um, and cellular respiration 
that breaks down sugar molecules and gives us lots and lots of ATP, um, which can be used to do cellular work. Okay. Um, ATP is, uh, so glycolysis and cellular respiration are exergonic reactions. And they are used to produce ATP, which can then be used to drive cellular work or are endergonic reactions, E-N-D-E-R-G-O-N-I-C. All right. So let's look at an, uh, this, this energy coupling a little bit closer. So here is our favorite, favorite equations so far this year. Um, and uh, continuing on with our photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, um, as I just said, is endergonic process. So it takes lower energy reactants, adds energy, from the sun and stores that energy in high energy reactants um, such as glucose. Then this energy in glucose is broken down in a second process that is exergonic, complete glucose breakdown, which as we know is glycolysis and cellular respiration, where we take high energy molecules like glucose and break them apart into lower energy products, which releases energy that we use to synthesize ATP. And if you recall, we said in class several times that these two processes are related, okay? The products of one are the reactants of the other, Okay, the, product, the reactants of this one are the products of the other. Okay, and so this is a little bit about how these two processes are related. We're going to do photosynthesis next. Um, but again, more looking at the um, endergonic and exergonic energy coupling, um, which occurs via ATP. And I think this one more little graphic right here, um, which kind of just picture gives you in picture form what we just looked at in the previous slide here's photosynthesis which is our endergonic reaction and cellular respiration which is an exergonic reaction um, and we see again here uh, let's start here with carbon dioxide and water are reactants for photosynthesis but they are also the products of cellular respiration. And then over here on this side, we have the products of photosynthesis, namely oxygen and glucose, which are the reactants for cellular respiration. Okay, um, and these exergonic and endergonic processes are linked via our good friend, uh oh, I lost my pee, um, ATP. So ATP is that kind of middleman, that intermediary between endergonic and exergonic processes. Now, obviously photosynthesis doesn't occur in animals. Um, so the process, the exergonic process of cellular respiration, actually zip back to this slide here. Oh, that's messy. Let's just take some of this out here. Dun, 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 um, so the exergonic process of cellular respiration releases energy in the form of ATP and that energy can be coupled to other endergonic reactions in the cell such as um, protein synthesis, DNA synthesis, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that requires energy, okay? Um, and I think that is gonna set us up um, to start glycolysis and cellular respiration in class tomorrow. So uh, that's it for now and have a pleasant evening. Adios.